Hello, welcome to part 11 of this series. Let's move to question number 201. What is the primary mechanism of injury in meniscal tear of the knee? Option A, direct trauma to the knee joint. Option B, non-contact deceleration with planted foot. Option C, excessive rotational stress on the knee joint. Option D, sudden acceleration with eccentric overload. And the answer is... Option C, excessive rotational stress on the knee joint. Now let's move to question number 202. Which of the following muscle is primarily responsible for horizontal abduction of the shoulder joint? Option A, pectoralis major. Option B, latissimus dorsi. Option C, serratus anterior. Option D, teres minor. And the answer is... Option B, latissimus dorsi. Now let's move to question number 203. What is the recommended treatment for a complete tear of supraspinal tendon? Option A. Immobilization and non-weight bearing activities. Option B. Aggressive rehabilitation exercises. Option C. Surgical repair followed by rehabilitation. Option D. Rise and activity modification. And the answer is... Option C. Surgical repair followed by rehabilitation. Now let's move to question number 204. Which of the following exercise is recommended for improving dynamic stability and proprioception in athletes with functional angle instability? Option A. Seated calf raise. Option B. Leg press machine. Option C. Single leg balance exercise on the unstable surface. Example like boso board or verbal board. Option D. Barbell squats. And the answer is... Option C. Single leg balance exercise on the unstable surface. Now let's move to question number 205. What is the primary mechanism of injury in stress fracture of the navicular bone? Option A. Direct trauma to the foot. Option B. Repetitive overload with inadequate recovery. Option C. Sudden deceleration with eccentric overload. Option D. Excessive inversion and eversion of the foot. And the answer is... Option B. Repetitive overload with inadequate recovery. Now let's move to question number 206. Which of the following condition is characterized by pain and tenderness around the ischial tuberosity and buttock region? Option A. Issue of humeral impingement. Option B. Proximal hamstring tendinopathy. Option B. Pyriformis syndrome. Option D. Adductor strain. And the answer is... Option C. Pyriformis syndrome. Now let's move to question number 207. Which of the following muscle is primarily responsible for inversion of the forearm? Option A. Biceps brachii. Option B. Brachioradialis. Option C. Pronator teres. Option D. Supinator. And the answer is... Option C. Pronator teres. Now let's move to question number 208. Which of the following exercise is recommended for improving shoulder stability and control in overhead athletes? Option A. Dumbbell bicep curls. Option B, lat pull downs. That's lats must pull down. Option C, close kinematic chain exercise with external rotation. Example like push up plus. Option D, seated dumbbell shoulder press. And the answer is Option C, close kinetic chain exercise with external rotation. Now let's move to question number 209. What is the primary mechanism of injury in a medial collateral ligament sprain of the knee? Option A. Direct trauma to the medial aspect of the knee. Option B. Non-contact deceleration with the planted foot. Option C. Excessive valgus stress on the knee joint. Option D. Sudden acceleration with eccentric overload. And the answer is... Option C. Excessive valgus stress on the knee joint. Now let's move to question number 210. Which of the following condition is characterized by pain and tenderness around the posterior aspect of the medial malleolus, that's inner angle bone? Option A. Posterior tibialis tendinopathy. Option B. Peroneal tendinopathy. Option C. Tandier impingement syndrome. Option D. Flexor halus longus tendinopathy. And the answer is... Option A. Posterior tibialis tendinopathy. Now let's move to question number 211. Which of the following exercise is recommended for improving hip mobility and flexibility in athletes with femoroacetabular impingement? That's FAI. Option A. Seated leg extension. Option B. Prone hip extension exercises. Option C. Dynamic stretching and firm rolling for the hip muscles. Option D. Biceps curl. And the answer is... 
option C dynamic stretching and firm rolling for the hip muscles now let's move to question number 212 which is the primary mechanism of injury in syndosmotic injury that's high angle sprain option A exercise inversion of the angle joint option B exercise inversion of the angle joint option C exercise external rotation of the angle joint option D exercise internal rotation of the angle joint and the answer is option C exercise external rotation of the angle joint now let's move to question number 213 Which of the following condition is characterized by the pain and tenderness around the lateral aspect of the angle joint? Option A peroneal tendinopathy. Option B posterior tibialis tendinopathy. Option C flexor hallucis longus tendinopathy. Option D anterior impingement syndrome. And the answer is Option A peroneal tendinopathy. Now let's move to question number 214. What is the primary mechanism of injury in lumbosacral disc herniation? Option A direct trauma to the low back region. Option B repetitive flexion and rotation of the spine. Option C sudden deceleration with eccentric overload. Option D excessive inversion or eversion of the foot. And the answer is Option B repetitive flexion and rotation of the spine. Now let's move to question number 215. Which of the following exercise is recommended for improving core stability and control in athletes with low back pain? Option A seated machine crunches, option B deadlifts, option C isometric abdominal bracing exercises, option D seated dumbbell shoulder press. And the answer is option C isometric abdominal bracing exercises. Now let's move to question number 216. What is the primary mechanism of injury in a hamstring strain? Option A direct trauma to the posterior thigh option B excessive knee flexion with hip extension option C sudden deceleration with eccentric overload option D repetitive overuse without proper recovery and the answer is option D repetitive overuse without proper recovery now let's move to question number 217 which of the following condition is characterized by pain and tenderness around the lateral aspect of the hip joint Option A trochanteric bursitis option B iliotibial band syndrome option C adductor strain option D piriformis syndrome and the answer is option B iliotibial band syndrome now let's move to question number 218 which of the following exercise is recommended for improving hip and pelvic stability in athletes with patellofemoral pain syndrome option A seated leg extension option B prone hip extension exercises Option C lateral step down with resistance option D bicep curl and the answer is option C lateral step down with resistance now let's move to question number 219 which of the following condition is characterized by pain and tenderness around the base of the fifth metatarsal bone option A plantar fasciitis option B achilles tendinopathy option C joints fracture option D metatarsalgia and the answer is option C joints fracture now let's move to question number 220d which of the following exercise is recommended for improving shoulder mobility and flexibility in overhead athletes option A dumbbell bicep curl option B lats pull down option C dynamic stretching and firm rolling for the shoulder muscle option D seated dumbbell shoulder presses and the answer is option C dynamic stretching and firm rolling for the shoulder muscles so that's all for today if you have any doubts please do mention in the comment box detail explanation of each and every question is given inside the telegram channel and concise explanation is given inside the description box please do dig check it out see you in the next part that's part 12 till then bye bye thank you